Hi there, I'm Stacy, the encaustic mixed media artist behind Studio Stacy. I work and create out of our home here in Northeast Ohio in a large, messy, light filled studio. Encaustic literally means to burn in. So I paint with a torch and hot beeswax mixed with a tree sap. And well, pretty much anything else I can get my hands on. When I'm not in the studio, I'm out exploring nature with my husband, Matt. Thanks so very much for being here. Consider subscribing and join this artsy community. Don't forget, hit that thumbs up button, which helps me get introduced to more like-minded people like yourself. This week, I thought I would change things up a little bit, do a voiceover about a big topic while I paint. That big concept or topic is finding inspiration for your artwork or for your paintings. So if you're an artist and you're struggling to find your inspiration for your paintings, this video is for you. And if you're not having trouble finding inspiration or figuring out what to paint, I still think it's worth a listen and you can always paint along with me. So let's get talking about inspiration. Inspiration can be found everywhere and in anything. According to the Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, the definition of inspiration is something that makes someone want to do something or that gives someone an idea about what to create, a force or influence that inspires someone, a person, place, experience, etc. that makes someone want to do or create something. So I think it's less about finding inspiration because Inspiration is literally everywhere. It is more of what to do with that idea you have from that inspiring moment. I'm hoping this is making some sense. As an artist or a creative person, I think we all strive to be unique and have our art stand out. This is the tricky part, coming up with a never before idea. In fact, I think that's pretty much impossible. I think it's more about putting your own spin on the same thought or idea. The idea may not be new, but the way you interpret and express this concept can be new and unique because it's your personal interpretation, which then makes this an authentic and original piece of art. So getting back to how I find inspiration, I have a few ways. My number one way is to get outside, whether it's in my own backyard or traveling to another area. Getting out of the house and exploring always helps. Going on mini adventures and trying new things also helps. Gaining new knowledge and having new experiences help spark new ideas. Getting away from the daily distractions allows for my own unique perspective to come through. I document these adventures by taking a lot of pictures. My memory card and my phone, they're always full. I also like to try to jot down my ideas. I think of it as a creative person, there's always a million ideas coming into my head. It's not a matter of lack of inspiration or lack of ideas. Sometimes it's about sorting through them to focus on just one. So keeping track of them helps me decide what one to start with and also gives me peace of mind that I can always change to another concept if this one idea doesn't work out. I like to make sure these ideas align with my personal core values. Taking a look at each project and eliminating ones that I'm not personally connected to helps me from getting overwhelmed. It's not to say that these were bad ideas and that I can't revisit them at another time. I'm just not going to work focus on them right at this moment. Some ideas never come to an actual series or they morph into a slightly different idea. The three year view was about connections. My initial thought was going to be asking my newsletter subscribers to ask complete strangers and places they were at what they found beautiful in that space. My idea was to have others build connections with complete strangers and to see what we all might have in common. Then of course the pandemic hit and I thought that idea might not be so safe. So instead, I still ask my newsletter subscribers to send me their favorite places, pictures they'd either, either been to or something in their current surroundings that they find beautiful. I then shared the painting process and the pictures on social media. 
What was so interesting about this process was several months later, I was in an art show with several of these paintings. Complete strangers recognized the places in the artwork. I had many conversations and connections about the through your view paintings with these strangers. So in a way, this series did exactly what I initially wanted it to accomplish. It connected people together. Pablo Picasso once said that inspiration comes does not depend on me. The only thing I can do is make sure it catches me working. For me, I like to really try hard to get into the studio every day, especially when I'm in the middle of a big project. Sometimes it's really just to clean up the space or prep some panels. It doesn't have to be to start or finish a big painting. But usually what I find happens is once I start something in the studio, I find myself creating and painting. I'm very grateful to have a separate studio space in my home. I don't have to go far to start creating and it's a dedicated space for that. No distractions. All I have to do is shut the doors and I can start painting. Lastly, not being afraid to fail helps. I learned pretty early on that paint can be covered up, mistakes can be scraped away, and it's only paint. I feel that if you're afraid to start, that inspiration will never strike you. So don't be afraid to start and don't be afraid to fail. After all, it's only paint. You have not done any harm if a painting or an idea does not come to fruition and does not work out. If something does not come out the way I was imagining it, I try to take a look at what didn't work. What can I do differently next time? And also what did work? Most of the time, there are areas in a painting that came out beautifully. The entire painting was not a failure. Then I think, how can I incorporate these lessons into the next painting or idea? And I move forward onto that idea and painting. Now that I've told you where I find my inspiration, I would love to know where you find yours. Is it in people's faces? Is it in a bustling city, music, books? Where do you find it? The options are really endless. I would love to know. Let me know down there below in the comments where you find yours. And if you are struggling with finding it. And also while you're down there, if you like the video and you want to give it a big thumbs up, I would greatly appreciate it. As always, thanks so very much for coming along. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.